Just a reminder that this and all my other videos are made for doll collectors or adults buying dolls for others. This is not a video for children. Viewer discretion is advised. Thank you very much for listening. Hello, Internet! My name is Kelsey, and welcome back to my closet. What do you get when you cross Christmas with spooky monsters? Well, um, Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas, the movie, of course. <laughs> but also Monster High Holiday Draculaura. Ugh, okay, so you guys know that I am turning into a Draculaura stan, so when I saw that she was going to be a holiday doll, I absolutely knew that I had to get her. And I wasn't able to get her from Walmart or Target or Amazon, but I did snag her during the Mattel Creations drop. I paid $43 plus shipping and tax, so it came out to like 52, and she is super also, I'm really lucky that I'm able to use my phone in between patients because otherwise I would have missed this I would have been at work and had no access to a computer But I was able to do it on my phone and my coworker was like, why are you sitting there? Aren't you going to lunch? And I'm like, yeah, in a, in a couple minutes <laughs> Click 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 <laughs> Anyway, so here is Draculaura in all of her spooky holiday glory Oh and she came right in time because I'm doing my marathon of filming right now and she just happened to be on the porch before I started so I was like well that's number five <laughs> let's have a look at the box so we've got snowflakes all over some are spider webs some have skelettes in them they really managed to mesh together the monster high vibes with a Christmas vibe or a holiday vibe it's just it gives both and kudos to the Monster High designers for that because they really found a way to bring them together. I'm gonna put her with my holiday Barbies this year and I'm sure she's gonna blend right in, even though she's wearing black. In the background, she also has some hanging snowflakes from spider webs. It says Monster High Holiday and Winter Edition. And the spider web snowflake designs continue on both side panels. And here is the back of the box where you can see artwork of her standing there and facing away kind of to the side. I'm not sure why. Here's her barcode as well in case you do want to try to find her at other retailers. I mean, I think the listings are pretty well circulated right now, but just in case. And then on the back of the box, it also says, Season screamings. Draculaura is ready for a fabulous holiday season. Dressed in a glittering gown with spiderweb details and a sheer coat with sparkling snowflake bats. Winter themed accessories, including candy cane gloves and ornament earrings, complete her fantastic look. May your holidays be a scary delight. I love this. Especially because, you know, I'm really getting into Monster High now that it's back. I love that even though Monster High definitely has its peak in the Halloween season, we can still get other holidays involved in the Monster High universe. I think it's finally time to open the box. So she actually comes with a certificate of authenticity that says this certifies that your Monster High Holiday Winter Edition doll materialized through the collaborative efforts of designers and artists at Mattel. It doesn't have a label the way that Barbie has like black and pink and all that other stuff, but I think every Monster High doll is probably a black label because, you know. Alright guys, Draculaura is out of the box and she looks Mm. Now, I will say that I totally forgot what I was going to say. Oh, yes. I will say that I wish that her bangs were cut a little bit more like the picture. Because if you look at this big picture here on the back of the box, there's kind of more of a curve into the widow's peak. And here it's just kind of a straight thing. I just wish they would arch a little bit up here but i would be too afraid to do that myself so i guess we're just gonna live with it otherwise she is fabulous fantastic and all of that good stuff let us look at her from top to bottom first of all she has got this big spiderweb snowflake crown up top that is made of a translucent black plastic with embedded glitter. And there is a heart in the center and there are little hearts at the tips and there are bats hidden in between. It is actually a ponytail clip because it goes around her high ponytail up here and her hair, as you can see on the back of her head, it's entirely pink. 
So the underside of the ponytail is very much pink, but she has her black streaks, of course, as well as some tinsel to give her a little extra shimmer for the holidays. And the tinsel continues up into the top of her head, but not into the bangs. And the bangs, like I said, they're not quite cut into that sharp widow's peak shape that I would like. They're not even as sharp as G3 Dra Draculaura's bangs. I'm just too afraid to cut them. I really don't want to mess them up. They have a little bit of product in them. They're very flat but not too, too much. You can still move them, as you can see. And of course, she has black eyebrows hiding under there and her purple eyes. But I definitely want to get the bangs out of the way here so that we can look at her makeup better. So she has a little shimmer under the eyebrow and purple eyeshadow that goes out into a wing shape. There's more shimmer on the underside as well. And there's a little bit of pink in this edge of the eye. She has tons of mascara to really accentuate her eyelashes and her eyeliner is super heavy. I just wish you could see it a little bit better under the bangs, you know, it's kind of hiding under there. But anyway, she also has pink lipstick with her fangs and of course her little heart on her cheek which has spider webs inside of it and some blushing. Actually, the spider web kind of extends past the heart. You can kind of see the spider web a little bit underneath. I don't know if that's intentional or not, or if they were just hoping that it was so faint that you wouldn't notice it. We notice everything on this channel. Anyway, then we have her earrings, and as the back of the box said, they are ornaments. But not just any ornaments, they are Christmas balls with bat wings on top hanging down from little black chains and they are a shimmery pink so that they go well with the whole Christmas shiny aesthetic. Then we get down to this necklace or chest plate thing because it's really way bigger than a necklace but I guess it's supposed to be a necklace and it's made of the same plastic as the ponytail holder and has the same sort of spider web snowflake design with the bats and the hearts. It kind of hooks around her shoulders at the back, not just around her neck. There is a larger heart right at the neck where the choker piece is. She looks so cool from the back. Look at that, like a gothic queen. I just took off the necklace so we can get a better look at the rest of the outfit. So she has puffy sleeves on this jacket and they stop at the elbow, but the jacket itself trains all the way down to the floor and it's scalloped at the bottom so that it has a spider web feel. And the pattern on the mesh is the same sort of snowflake pattern. It has a fanged heart in the center. There's little hearts and bat wings all throughout. It's glitter as well. It's not a very sparkly glitter because the ring light is not really making it shimmer too much. It's more of a subdued, like you have to be looking and then you notice that it's kind of shining out from the mesh. I wish it had a little bit more sparkle. You know, I'm a sparkle girl, but the pattern itself is really nice. Also though, I wish that this was hemmed. It has all raw edges down the fronts and along the bottoms. For a collector doll and a $43 doll, it would have been nice to have some finishing details to make absolutely certain that this is not going to fray over time because I can see already there are some minor spots here and there where the fraying will begin. So we're gonna have to be careful with that. It is hemmed more so at the top, and once we take the belt off, we can probably get a better look at that. But it is a really cool piece and gives this just gothic flair that I love. And on her arms, to kind of compensate for the shortness of the sleeves, we have these extra sleeve pieces. I guess these are the candy cane gloves that they were talking about. They are black and white striped in a candy cane pattern, and there's a rubber band piece that goes over the middle finger so that it stays. They are made of a shinier satiny material. She also has this belt, and it has a pink painted buckle on the front and it's the same again black translucent plastic with the embedded glitter and it's a little bit hard to tell when it's on her but there are little drips coming down but they kind of blend into the fabric of the jacket still it's nice and it just fastens in the back and now that the belt is off like I said you can see that 
there is some hemming on the upper part of the jacket probably because that would be more likely to fray than this part that's not rubbing against anything and there's also some gathering right here to help make this train skirtish part of the jacket. And underneath the jacket, we have this cute little number. It is a pink satin dress with a spiderweb pattern on the front. There are a couple of curly cues hidden in there and it is textured like there is glitter on here. Again, it's that glitter that just doesn't really pick up the light too much unless you're really staring at it. Now, unfortunately, the pattern doesn't continue all the way to the back. Now, you're not really supposed to look at the back. The back is supposed to look like this because she's got the jacket. So, I mean, we know Mattel is kind of infamous for cutting corners in those ways. Oh, look, she's creeping up on you. But I would have liked to see the spider web all the way around. Even if they didn't do the glitter part on the back, just to have the black design there just to give it a little bit of extra detail and for people who want to maybe use this dress on other dolls, other Monster High dolls from the past, or even, you know, your creep production Draculaura or whatever, real drama Draculaura, <laughs> it would have been nice for it to have details so that you don't have to wear this over it all the time. And then finally, we get down to her shoes. Again, we have that translucent black plastic and they are boots with a spiky heel in the back and it kind of looks like rock candy almost coming out of hearts. I guess it's supposed to be like ice or icicles because it's winter. Oh, and I didn't even notice that. It's like a blink and you'll miss it, but there are molded snowflake spider web things on the sides of the boots. So that was a nice extra little detail. Kind of hard to see, but it is there, so at least they put that effort into it. The shoes are not as crazy and wild as some other Monster High shoes that I've seen from G1 dolls. It would have been nice to see something a little more out there, a little more experimental, but they're not awful shoes. And that is it guys, that is Holiday Draculaura. I just put her little accessories back on. Of course, she has the original Monster High articulation and body and face sculpt. So she moves at the head, the shoulders, the elbow and the wrist, the hip and the knee. And the only other thing besides the certificate of authenticity that she came with is her stand. It's a classic Monster High shaped stand and it has the same sort of black embedded glitter plastic to match all of her accessories and her shoes. So it blends in well with her outfit when you go to display her. Would I say that she is worth $43 necessarily? Part of that is that you're paying for the fact that she's a special edition collector, whatever. The Holiday Barbies are also generally the same price and they tend to be way less inspired in design and have really, really cheap elements. There are some cheap elements here too that I would have liked to see a little more effort put in, like hemming the bottom of this, having the pattern on the dress go all the way around, but her design kind of takes away all of those complaints because it is so cool. It is super spooky, gothic, but also has these elements of celebration and the holidays and winter because of the snowflakes, because of the shimmery elements. And the fact that she's got like a silhouette of a ball gown, even though it's not a ball gown. So they really nailed it with combining these two clashing vibes into one doll and I really like her and I can't wait till I put my Christmas display up to add her to it. So you guys let me know what you think of Holiday Draculaura. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends, and until next time, bye!